Hi, ES7s. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about friction. Now, you can see here, um, here's a common use of friction, which is generating enough heat energy to be able to start a fire just from the rubbing of two sticks together. Um, that's really what people think about friction, but friction is actually a force that happens when things rub together. Let's have a look at what I mean by that. Now, whenever you have two surfaces that rub together, actually, even very smooth surfaces are somewhat rough if we look at them under a microscope. You can see here I've got pictures of wood, aluminium and glass, a lot of substances that I would consider to be quite smooth, not rough at all. But you can see here that there are loads of pits and uh, dips and valleys and mountains if we look really closely. Whenever those tiny bumps on the surface catch on each other, it provides some kind of resistance and that means it slows the object down if it is moving. So friction will always act in the opposite direction to the direction that you are traveling in. Uh, water and air can also provide a sort of friction as well. As you move through water or air, the particles of those fluids will hit you. And because they're hitting you, that's providing a what we call a drag force. You can see here if this red object is the object that I'm trying to move through. When I move through the air, that object is going to hit the, um, the air particles. And as the air particles hit you, they are slowing you down. These are known as drag forces, and they can slow down your movement. You can see that movement through water is much more difficult than movement through air because there are way more particles in water. And so you have to be a lot more strategic about your positioning. Uh, there are a few ways we can re reduce friction. Uh, we can add something slippery like oil or grease. Um, if we do that, that's called lubrication. And uh, the slippery substance, the oil, the grease, that's called a lubricant. And that means that we reduce the friction by basically covering up all those little pits and valleys that are in that microscopic area of the thing, making something very, very slippery. You probably know this if you've ever tried to uh, grab something soapy. Uh, it's very difficult to move it, to, to hold onto it. All right. One of the things I'm going to want you to do is have a look at these images here. Just do a quick peel paragraph for me. Uh, look at these designs. All of these are really good at going super fast. What are the things they have in common? Think about how we can minimize drag forces. All right. Have you seen that there's some pretty standard things here? Having fins or wings that are really, really narrow is a really good idea. And having a pointed shaped body that again is very long and narrow is also a really good design. All of these designs help us cut through the air, the air resistance. So um, uh, we call this being streamlined. A more streamlined shape is going to enable you to uh, reduce the drag forces. I think as well, on the body of these things, they're very smooth. Um, they need to be smooth so that water can pass through them really quickly and help minimize those drag forces. And for the Formula One car, you can actually see it doesn't have any tread on its tires because it wants to be able to move very, very quickly. So we're reducing the friction on the road, allowing it to move very, very fast. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Have a really good day um, and hopefully I'll see you soon.